beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here. My name is Kira Graves. If you're new here, welcome. I haven't really gone into detail about this topic yet on my channel because I wasn't, I wasn't quite ready, okay? But now I am ready to talk about it and share my experiences with you all because I've gotten a lot of questions being like, What does she, they mean? Why did your pronouns change? Are you non-binary? How did you realize you were non-binary? And all of the above. So this is this is for that. These, this is to address those questions. I hope this helps some of you out there who might be confused about their gender or exploring their gender identity. What are the feelings inside? You're probably like, what, what are these feelings? Cause same. <laughs> that was me. That was me. My name is Kira Graves. My pronouns are she, they, and I'm gender fluid. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. So how I knew I was gender fluid. Let's go back to the very beginning of when I first met people that were non-binary and that identity was first introduced to me, probably like in high school. So at the time, all the representation I saw for non-binary people was basically like, I was seeing the same presentation of a non-binary person over and over and over again. So I just assumed that is a non-binary person. I don't directly relate to that person or resonate with that person or have the same feelings as that person. So I must not be non-binary. I didn't necessarily identify with their personal stories. I didn't intend to get top surgery and all the non-binary people I had seen had gotten top surgery or had wanted to get top surgery. So I wasn't in that boat. Therefore, I was like, I must not be non-binary. And I still sometimes, you know, enjoy wearing makeup and more feminine clothes, whatever that even means. And lastly, all the non-binary people I knew at the time, I was kind of jealous of them and I didn't know why. I think I was jealous of the fact that they could come out and be open about their identity and I couldn't. And that was very confusing for me. I didn't realize that that was jealousy until a couple years later. And then I was like, whoa, I was totally supportive, but a part of me was like, I wish I could do that. I first started questioning my gender in the winter of 2020. I wasn't quite sure what I was feeling and I was very scared. You know, us Tauruses do not like change. So I was very scared of everything going on in my brain. All of my feelings, all of my, you know, seemingly new feelings, or maybe my feelings had just been awakened because of the, you know, representation I had recently seen for non-binary people or the people around me that were very, um, encouraging and accepting. I didn't feel like I really resonated um, with my cisgender female friends. I didn't feel like I belonged to that group. I didn't feel like I was the same. The first feeling that was overwhelming that I couldn't ignore was I hated being perceived as a female in public. Like when I went outside, I did not want to be perceived as a female. Sometimes I would go out and hide my hair and hide my body with clothes. Part of this I think was that I didn't want to be objectified. I hate gender roles and I hate, you know, performing a certain way how society wants me to perform because of my biological sex. And every part of me was rejecting those ideals. I hated when people called me miss or ma'am or hey ladies. Like, you know, when someone comes up, like the server comes up to your table and they're like, hi ladies, what can I get for you? I'm like, no. <laughs> Another defining moment in my self-discovery was actually when my partner was discovering their own gender identity. I could relate to a lot of the things that they were experiencing and feeling. And I finally felt, you know, heard and seen. And I was like, oh, you feel that way too? They would, you know, start talking about their gender and I'd be like, oh my God, same, same. I remember my partner turning to me and being like, Kira, sometimes I just feel like a genderless soul. And I was like, same. And that's, I think when I realized like, there isn't just one way to be non-binary. There isn't just one way to be non-binary. Gender is a huge massive spectrum and it isn't even just a linear spectrum. I've seen the spectrum being like in a little cube box thingy. Your appearance and your style does not always correlate directly to your gender. That's what I didn't realize that I needed to wrap my head around and that really, really helped me become more confident in my gender identity. People I looked up to started coming out. Demi Lovato came out as non-binary using they, them pronouns. Halsey changed their pronouns to she, they. And a bunch of other, you know, friends and acquaintances and people I knew were identifying as she, they. I had no idea 
idea that you could use two pronouns. Like you can use three, you can use however many you want. I didn't realize that. Like I thought it was only you could use she, her, they, them, and he, him. And when I realized you could identify with she, they pronouns, I was like, Wait, this feels really good. This feels very validating. I really enjoy that. So the first thing I did was change my pronouns in my Instagram bio to she day. I was seeing a lot of people, um, you know, change their pronouns, put their pronouns in their bio, you know, be open about that kind of thing. And I was like, oh, sweet. This is empowering me to do the same. So I explored a few different labels. I knew that I was somewhere on, you know, the gender spectrum in the non-binary category or the non-binary umbrella, but I didn't know what specific label would pertain to my situation. I was stressing, I was struggling. I was like, does this mean I'm still non-binary? Cause like, I don't experience all the things that some non-binary people experience so you know what does that mean what does it mean that i still sometimes enjoy presenting quote unquote feminine i found the label demi girl i will put the definition up on the screen in case you don't know i really resonated and still resonate with with demi girl but the reason why i don't identify with it is because not a lot of people know what it is and what it means in the future when i tell people my gender identity and i say demi girl I would have to explain it pretty much every time. It's not a very known gender identity label in the general public. Like maybe in the queer sphere, in the queer sphere, in the LGBTQ plus space. Um, but in the general public, people would be like, what? And I also resonate with the term gender fluid. I love the term gender fluid and I decided to use the term, term, gender, Blech. I think also more people understand the term gender fluid. It's used more often in society, in the general public. I feel like my gender changes from day to day, from month to month, even my gender changes within the same day, it feels like. Sometimes I'll wake up and be like, I feel like a woman today. I feel good about using she, her pronouns. And then let's say I'm going out for dinner that night and I'm getting dressed for dinner and I put on something more quote unquote feminine. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, this feels very uncomfortable. This feels, I feel a bit um, gender sporic in this outfit. Whereas other days I feel completely fine in that outfit. So that's what I mean by, I feel like my gender changes. Fluid, you know? And sometimes, you know, someone will, will refer to me as they, them and I'll be like, oh, weird. Cause I kind of feel like she, her today or like someone uses she, her. And I'm like, ooh, I don't really feel like a woman today. Um, can you please use they, them? Most days than not, I just wanna be kind of ambiguous, like somewhere in the middle. Not all the way at the, at the man spectrum, but just, you know, fluctuating between the female and the middle of the, the chart. I drew a little, chart. I know that like the gender spectrum isn't always like a linear graph, but I wanted to draw something for you so that you could understand. So this circle is basically like how I fluctuate like from day to day, from month to month. I mainly stay in that like general circle and the NA just means like none of the above. The NA is like agender. I'll put the definition for agender up in case you are not familiar with it. That's where I, that's where I tend to fluctuate. Some words I'm still okay with using. So for example, like calling myself Willow's mommy. Willow's mommy. Or like, you know, cat mom. My sister will call me sister, that's fine. Queen you know, is sometimes okay. But sometimes I prefer queen, like a queen and a king together, a queen. That's my new favorite word. But there's some terms that are more gender neutral that I prefer using like partner, kid instead of daughter, person instead of girl. I've had days where I don't want boobs at all um, because they make me look like a woman. So I'll just wear like a really tight sports bra and dress in clothes that are a bit looser fitting that aren't accentuating my body. Since my boobs are really tiny in the first place, it doesn't take much to make them flat, um, thankfully. And other days I don't mind having the boobs because you know, when they are showing, they're not like too much there. Too, too, too obvious. Too, you know what I mean? Sometimes I wanna cut my hair into a pixie cut. Actually, I've been wanting to cut my hair into a pixie cut for years now, but at the same time, if I do it, I'm gonna miss this hair sometimes, you know what I mean? But the cool thing about this shag is like, I can kind of make it more androgynous, pretty versatile. 
it complements my gender identity. But at the end of the day, like those are just constructs. Oh, shorter hair is like a male thing or like a masculine thing and longer hair is a feminine thing. I don't believe in those, um, but I'm just using those as examples. Your outward appearance is your own and it's what makes you most confident. And you know, it's not gonna always coincide with your gender identity and your sexuality. You can dress however the fuck you want. And it does not have to mean anything about anything, okay? And that I think is the moral of my story. And that was the most important concept for me to grasp. This might be a unpopular opinion, people. If someone misgenders me, I'm not gonna like make a huge deal out of it and get offended because, you know, in general, that's still how society looks at things. It's really unfortunate, but it is. The majority of the people in the world still think, you know, black and white, male and female, feminine equals female, masculine equals male. That's not how my brain works, but I just know that that's how the majority of the world still works. Therefore, when someone misgenders me, I'm not gonna get super upset about it. I'm definitely gonna get uncomfortable, and if it's someone that I know, I'm gonna correct them and be like, hey, yeah, I'm actually gender fluid. For the majority of the time, to be on the safe side, I do prefer gender neutral terms. I do usually prefer they, them pronouns over she, her pronouns. And I really, really appreciate if people use both interchangeably when they're talking about me. Like, I love Kira's new outfit. She really rocks it. I hope they do a fit check on their Instagram. That, that, that is a weird example. <laughs> I hate myself for just using that example. But you know what I mean, you know what I mean. The people near and dear to me do, do do that. They do do, they do do that. <laughs> Let me make it clear that I'm still discovering myself. I believe that my gender is fluid, so it's never gonna be like one thing. I think it's always gonna be kind of fluctuating and I don't wanna put my gender in a box. That's why I love the word fluid. Fluid. And also, um, I'm pansexual. I, yeah, I, I haven't really said that, but um, yeah. <laughs> I know that a lot of people are not going to understand this. They're going to be like, you can't look like that and not be a woman. Ah, another one of you guys on the internet. Ah! Or, you know, oh, not you, not you unsubscribe. I'm ready. I'm ready for all of that. And if you don't want to be here anymore on my channel, it's cool. I think I put off this video because I was, you know, just anticipating the hate comments and I wasn't ready for the hate comments. But, you know, everyone has their own opinion. I get it. I get it. But I hope that you do have an open mind and are open to different people's experiences. And yeah, this was just my story. I hope it helps a lot of you. Please let me know if it helps because I love reading your comments and being like, oh yay. Let me know if you want to hear more about my story because I will try and make more videos on gender if that is what you want. Also, do you like my pin? I love pronoun pins. Normalize wearing pronoun pins. Every time I go out wearing a pronoun pin, I feel like people are like, Hi. Um, hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, make sure you like it, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. Whatever you identify as, I love you and you are valid. And just because there isn't someone on the internet who feels the same way as you, it doesn't mean you're not valid. Just remember that. I love you, Mwah. See you in my next video. Here's a hug. Mwah.